following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. In today's episode of the Staley in English show featuring Coach Kurtz, the coaches are joined by head coach of AC Flora in Columbia, South Carolina girls basketball, Coach Coral Johnson. And they preview Class 4A Region 4 boys and girls basketball of the South Carolina High School League. They discuss Jimmy Butler and the Timberwolves. They also answer the question, for a billion dollars, what five would you pick to beat LeBron, Jordan, Kobe, Shaq, and Magic? Enjoy the show. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the Staley in English show featuring Coach Kurtz. I'm your man, Coach English, and we in the building with Coach Kurtz and Coach Staley. And we got another special guest joining us this week. As we have said over the next couple of weeks, we will have a guest per week. Um, But we'll start off as we always do. Coach Staley, how was your week, brother? Week was blessed. God is good. Um, a week closer to basketball season, but in the same breath, um, another Friday is coming up and I get to see some good high school football. So I really enjoy football season. So all is well, man. I don't have any complaints. Uh, try my best to be the best version of me every day and help someone else while I'm on, along the way. How are things going with you, Coach Kurtz? That's a good week. That's a great week. You know what you guys have and to be on the show with my main man, Coach Johnson. I haven't talked to him or heard from him in a while. So glad, excited to be on the show with Coach Johnson. And, uh, and definitely prayers up to everybody affected by this latest hurricane. Crazy. Crazy. Amen. Sure. Coach Thank you all for having me. I appreciate it. I hope I can bring something to the table for the podcast. Uh, just chilling and – Happy to bless to have a new addition to my family and just getting ready for basketball season. Thank y'all for having me. Oh, yeah, man. Congrats on the new baby, man. Coach Johnson finally got that baby boy. I try to coach up all my friends on how to have boys, man. And, um, congrats, Coach. <laughs> yeah, congrats, Appreciate congrats, it. Congrats on that baby boy, baby Avery, man. Baby Avery. Thank you. Coach E, how things been going for you this week? Man, pretty good, man. I had a day off of work from today, and it's been uh, it was actually pretty cool until my lights went out. Uh, then I had to <laughs> go up to the high school and, and uh, did some work up there. But for the most part, man, I had a great week. Um, really, really want to send um, the best of the show out, and we'll probably give a shout-out to them again later on. But uh, all the residents down there in Mexico City, Florida, um, that city was completely – I don't know if you've seen the shots of that place, but it is completely wiped out. Um, it, it, thousands upon thousands of people have lost their homes. Um, it looks legitimately like a tidal wave hit it and just washed everything away. So if you haven't had an opportunity to please say a prayer out to those people out there, cause you know, like, like I always, like I've been living by for the last, you know, last year or two is, you know, things could be better, but they could always be worse. And, and just, you know, if you could say a prayer out there to those people, that would be send a prayer up to God for those people, man, that'd be great, um, for them. But we're going to go ahead and, uh, we're going to get started. Um, first, we're going to, you, as you know, we are previewing the uh, the South Carolina High School League basketball season. And uh, we're going to start off with uh, 
4A Region 4. Uh, this year uh, happens to be a swing region, and, and uh, Coach Daly and Coach Johnson, uh, uh, they can elaborate more exactly on what that exactly means. But we're going to start off with Coach Johnson. Coach Johnson, uh, uh, you made it all the way to the third round last year. Um, you, you came to Hartsville, and to my dismay, wink, wink, you beat the Hartsville. <laughs> you beat Hartsville um, and, and went on to win another game on the road and, and, and made it to the third round. So uh, what do you think about your team coming back? Well, this year um, I lost a, a D1 college player in Jordan um, Strange, but I returned probably 70% of my my team, which it was good to have them – Get a, get enough experience in the playoffs so they know what they expect and and understand the ground of the season, and we're just working hard and just getting ready and just hope to build on what we had last year so we can possibly compete for the region title. We're in a tough region, which is a swing region, but we just hope that we're able to compete and we just take it game by game and plan for the preseason and then we you know take it to Christmas break onto our region play and then chip far where they may we get ready for the playoffs. So what is um what does the swing region mean? What does that mean for those who don't know? Well the swing re- swing region means they try to balance out the upper state and lower state, meaning they saying the lower state has more teams than the upper state. So the way it works in basketball is the first and the fourth place team out of our region are placed in the upper state while the second and the third place team stays in the lower state. So, I mean, it, 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 it complicates path uh, in the playoffs by, you know, so it shows that every game in the region is very, very important because you could end up at certain places, you know, tough places to play in the first round. So you want to try to maximize your potential to, get a favorable bracket to try to advance. Okay, so my question to you is, uh, you have the likes of OW, um, Dreer, LR, uh, which is a perennial powerhouse every year, Dreer, perennial powerhouse every year. Uh, You lose Chapin, but you pick up uh, Lakewood and uh, Crestwood. How do you feel about uh, the region as it stands right now? Which teams do you think – are going to make a, a a real push, and uh, how do you think about what do you think about your chances? Well, my chances, it, it, like I said, our, our team, uh, how how the preseason goes uh, going into region, you know, everything is built off confidence. But I consider our, our region, besides the Westwood region, to be two of the toughest uh, regions in the state as far as you look at the number of quality players. Plus, you look also you look at what has happened over the last three to four years with regards to the teams in this region being ranked at, you know, so it's very, very tough and bringing in Lakewood and Crestwood, which had with Crestwood has been over the last 10 years, uh, a perennial, they always make a deep run in the playoffs and Lakewood is as up and down, but adding them losing champion and picking up two, two more tough teams. I think we have one of the toughest teams in the region. Uh, you know, in the state, per se. Okay. Um, well, that's good. Uh, what are some of the top players in your region? Uh, the top players in our region, uh, I have one, well, two, McKinley Brooks Sumter and DeBrell Williams. We also, you also with LR, they have uh, multiple returning players. They they lost one, but they returned seven out of their top eight. A lot, like O'Dubby returns their uh, – Two, two of their two best players, Demaya Tucker and um, Brandon Rivers. And LR and OW was co-champion. So you see what you're dealing with. Um, Lakewood uh, lost their best player. She ended up transferring to Sumter. But Crestwood, they lost two Division One kids that signed with Winthrop. But as far as the reason, the region, like I said, Demaya Tucker, McKinley, Brooks Sumter, you got uh, Brandy. Rivers, you also have um, with LR. You got multiple kids, but you uh, you have Ariana Brooks, Zayla um, Adams. You have um, An- Anaya Nelson. 
and the other one. So everything in our region is, is pretty competitive. That's why I said every game matters. Okay. Well, that's cool. Uh, Coach Staley, any questions? Um, no, I, I don't have any questions. I saw we went to the gym today. Uh, um, Tao, Jay, and myself went to the gym today to get some work in. I saw some of Coach Johnson's competition. I saw Anaya Nel. I saw Nelson from Lower Richland, and I saw um, Imani. What's Imani's last name, Coach Johnson? Oh, uh, Williams. I, I, my bad. I keep forgetting about Drill, but yeah. Drill is young and they improving. And uh, Imani Williams. Uh, Am- um, what's that? Amber, I can't recall her na- last name um, at the moment, but they are always a powerhouse and they're always, you know, they're always there. So you can't count nobody out in our region. I'm, well, I'm going to break it down to you like this. I'm going to tell you what I saw. So Nelson and um, Williams, which is Amani and Ania Nelson, um, Nelson is Jacor Nelson's little sister who's playing at Campbell right now. They're talented and they're good. It's scary. Nelson goes to LR. William goes to um, Dreer. And I'm not going to lie. Nelson looks like a complete guard. I mean, she's still a baby. I think she's only in, what, the ninth, 10th grade? Ninth grade. Ninth grade? Jesus. She's only in the ninth grade. That makes it worse. Um, Monty is only in the, what, ninth grade? Yes. Jesus. I just got to say Jesus again. God forgive me. Um, like, those two girls are a problem, and I'm going to break it down to you. A couple of shows back, I, I explained how Tal and Jay played two grown men and beat them. Well, I guess Tal wanted to take that momentum, and he played these. Him and another kid, not even Jason, an older kid that was in middle school, played these two um, ninth-grade young ladies, and they whooped their tails. Okay, these two young ladies gave Tal and the other little young man that goes to Summit Parkway Middle School the business. So, Coach Johnson... Um, just like I do, you have your hand, hands full in a very competitive region. And yes. region four is always so competitive. So I'm looking forward to some um, great basketball on the young lady side. All right. Well, that's – that's I, I really can't wait myself to see what happens there. Um, I always like watching you guys' region. It's a tough region. Um, there's very few uh, regions in, I, I think, 4A on the boys' and the girls' side is, is some of the strongest basketball in the state. Um, uh, we're going to move on to the boys' side, uh, and, and we're lucky enough to have Josh Daly, who is one of our hosts <laughs> uh, here on the Staley and English Show. And Josh, uh, how do you feel? Same question to you. You know, uh, how do you feel about your team that's returning? I like this team a whole lot. We lost three seniors last year, and, um, so we returned a good bit of young men. Really disciplined group, really good group. We might not have the star appeal that we've had in the last previous years as far as big names. So obviously we haven't gotten invited to any nationally acclaimed um, Christmas tournament. We are in the Bojangles. We will be um, competing in that very good um, event at Greenville High School also, and and we're in the event at um, Lexington High School. But this group, we'll call them a group of no names. I mean, it's a bunch of guys who have to prove themselves, have to make a name for themselves. But they're they're a very good group. They're a disciplined group, and I really like um, how how they are um, forming right now. Of of off of how hard they grinded this past spring and summer, even into, into the fall. Right now, um, we expect the big time senior leadership from um, some of the multiple seniors that we have: Daniel Finney, um, Derek, DJ Sinclair, Matthew, uh, Matt, Matt, and um, Jameson. RJ, Mobley, Quincy Riley. So we have a, a very strong group of seniors that we're going to be leaning on this year because we are also going to be fairly young also. And I'm looking forward to this group. As far as our region shapes up, I think it's gone from very difficult to play into even more difficult. Um, Chapin has moved up to 5A. And with Chapin leaving out, we – acquired Crestwood and Lakewood. So the region got any t- even tougher. That's no knock on Chapin. Now, I'm, what I'm, all I'm saying is we born, in, we born in two very good competitive teams in um, Lakewood and Crestwood. Uh, I think it's going to be very tough. I was able to see most of the teams over the summer, even though you can't put a whole lot of stock in the summer. But from what I saw, guys are very good. Orangeburg Wilkerson is coached. 
by one of the um, all-time greats in the state of South Carolina and Willie Thomas, so they're always going to be good. Lakewood, we had a battle with them in the third round, and they got two very good players um, in Jawan and um, what's his name, Quentin, if I'm not mistaken, Daryl's there coming back. And um, to my knowledge, they have a big-time transfer that came in from Crestwood um, that's going to help them out. Crestwood's always going to be competitive. They got a very big – very um, big young kid out there. And then the lower Richlands and the Dreers of the world are always going to be lower Richland and the Dreer, very competitive, um, high IQ basketball kids that are well coached. I like the prospects on, on um, lower Richland's team. I think they have some um, very good young talent that can ultimately be playing at the next level. So it's going to be, it's going to be very competitive this year. Most people are like, you know, oh, man, I'm so excited. It's going to be so competitive. You know, I'm excited about that. But in the same breath, I know we have to make sure we're ready to play night in and night out. Because if you finish fourth in this region, the reward that you possibly can get is either playing like the defending state champions in Ridgeview in the first round of the playoffs. So you have to you have to make sure you're ready to play. So I'm expecting a very competitive year and. I wish everyone good luck, man. Even though we're battling against each other, you know, only time I want to get at you is when we inside that that um rectangle, man. And other than that, I wish you the best. Well, that's good. That's I I think that you guys' region is going to be um, one of the toughest regions uh, in the state. Um, to on, I mean, on both the girls, and I know I said it already on both the girls and the boys' side. Um, and I just, you know, I always despise <laughs> how we, uh, <laughs> how we, we kind of have to go through each other uh, in foray. How they just, I don't know how they figured out all oh, these powerhouses are supposed to be in foray. Um, but I, I guess uh, you, you, you know, you want to, you, you got to have uh, competition, and uh, you know, it's all well worth it. And Josh, the one thing I know about your teams is they're going to be extremely well coached. Um, they're going to be disciplined, and they're going to play hard. So. You may say that you don't have star appeal, but, you know, I, I think that uh, some words that you said years ago rang uh, about two years ago to me kind of ring true. And that's, uh, you know, um, a great program never graduates and it doesn't transfer. And the job you've done there and, and, and shoot, you, you too, Coach Johnson, the job that you've done there, um, you guys have done an amazing job of taking AC Flora into the next into the next level. And I wish you guys the best of luck this year, um, except for when you play me. Um, <laughs> except except for if you play us, um, I definitely wish you absolutely no luck. But but um, uh, uh, all in all, thanks uh, a lot. Uh-huh. <laughs> you act like the fe- the feeling isn't mutual, man. Come on, don't do that. No, no, I, I want your kids to play well and miss all of their shots. Yeah, no, I, I, I wish I, I well. wish no injury, and I hope that your kids make. All of their shots all year until they play us. I just hope they miss every single shot and we get a nice a couple of long rebounds. Hey, 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 hey Coach Angles, you do me a favor this year. What? Don't come to no LR games for me because you came and they couldn't miss in my gym. The last game you came. Man, I came to support. I came to support my two friends. <laughs> well, you must have bought a bad night, a vibe that night because they hit 11 threes. <laughs> <laughs> I came to support my friends. So you're going to tell me I'm banned from supporting my friends? God, on, Lee. On and, certain nights. Well, and, and that means, and, and do you know the drive I had to make to support you guys? Oh, I know. Hey, man, yeah, you always welcome at Florida, man. <laughs> Except for when y'all play LR, right? Uh, right. I don't, really, I, I, don't, I don't really agree with that. You're not always welcome, but go ahead, man. We're going to keep it moving. <laughs> Well, we're going to go ahead and move in, uh, move into our topic of the day. Um, we had another topic that was uh, supposed to be um, decision making, but um, with all the events that happened yesterday and today uh, with Jimmy Butler, um, we're going to go ahead and move into that. So I'm going to let Josh go ahead and segue that in. Go ahead, Josh. All right, man. So I was actually going to let Micah start this. this okay, part, well, well then we'll throw it to Micah. Micah, go ahead. No, go ahead. You guys go ahead and again and uh, just give an overview about the topic. Okay, so I'll go ahead and go. I'll be disciplined and obedient. So Jimmy Butler obviously has been playing with the Minnesota Timberwolves since last season. As we know, this offseason, he demanded a trade. 
Now, this is some type of trend that's going on in basically all sports now, especially on the basketball side, is when a guy isn't happy, he tells management and his coach, hey, I don't like playing here anymore. I want to be traded. Well, this worked out exceptionally well for Kyrie Irving because obviously he got traded and he instantly turned Boston into one of the top teams in the East. And I'm looking at them to even arguably make it out of the East this year. Jimmy Butler said he wanted to get traded. He said, he said his teams wanted to get traded to. If I'm not mistaken, it was the Clippers. It was um, the New Jersey – I mean, the New York – the Brooklyn Nets. Pardon me. It was the Brooklyn Nets. And what – I think it was one more team. I saw the Knicks, the Knicks and that the Nets. Clippers. There it is, the Knicks and the New York Knicks. So he demanded to be traded to those teams. Well, we all know if you are an, uh, a sports head like us us guys here on this show, you know that all of those teams have room for someone to make a max deal to sign at least two max players the next um this next coming summer off season. Well, obviously, Coach Thibodeau knew how important it was to keep Jimmy Butler on the team. So the demands that they were asking. The trade, the trades that they were trying to make, other teams just weren't comfortable in making them because they felt they were giving up too much. Fast forward, long story short, Jimmy Butler is still playing with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now he's with the Minnesota Timberwolves. He um, went to practice, which I actually respect. I always love Jimmy Butler, and I would love to have him on my team because he's a dog. He's 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 focused on winning, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to win. So. I love Jimmy Butler for that, but my respect level for him went higher when I found out he went to practice. And then, boom, this happened. He got into a verbal slashing argument with management, Coach Thibodeau and the other coaches, and ultimately his teammates. He took the third-string players and beat the first-string guys in a scrimmage. And if you've been following why Jimmy Butler once um what's been going on, he's been having conflict with some of the younger guys on the Minnesota Timberwolves team. He feels that they aren't focused on winning. He feels that their um especially Andrew Wiggins is nonchalant about preparation. So he being the hard nosed guy who came up out of the mud, who didn't come from a whole lot, he's struggling with those type of mindsets. So. He called a team. They were supposed to practice today, but practice was canceled. And they had a team meeting, a players-only meeting, and Jimmy Butler called in. He put everything out on the table and said his problems were with management, not his teammates. And his teammates expressed themselves. And he let them know he's there. So that's where we are right now. Um, I'm a little out of breath after explaining all that. So I'm going to let you guys – I got some more points I want to make as far as why I think Jimmy Butler's at this point. But I'm going to open up the floor. I'm going to let you guys get involved. Coach Johnson, you always have great ideas. So, Coach Kurtz, what are your thoughts on everything that was kind of going on with Jimmy Butler? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's – it's uh, obviously the NBA is doing it from a business side. The NBA has got it going on as far as getting – players storylines and always having some type of drama going on. And so, I mean, the bottom line is this is great for the NBA as far as the whole Jimmy Butler situation. Um, I mean, I 100%, I don't know. I don't know Jimmy Butler. I've never met Jimmy Butler, but I mean, I res- from everything that I've seen about him, I respect that dude. Like you said, he's, he, he, he was never, a. uh, uh thought in college and high school, he was never like, Hey, this is a top five guy. And he's, he's definitely one of the top players in the NBA. And um, I think he's a straight up dog and he's a competitor and he, and there's a lot of guys that are in the league that don't want to win and don't want to compete like Jimmy Butler does. And listening a little bit about the, um, the interview that he had with Rachel Nichols, um, but I think a little bit had to do with the, they offered him a, I guess it was a max contract extension, but it was a max four year deal. And he didn't want the four year deal. He wanted the, 
whatever the max money was for for a smaller two year deal or whatever to give him a little bit of leverage, which LeBron and KD and all these guys have been doing, and they wouldn't budge on that. Um, so that's where the real contention came because he wants he wants to play for a team and a management that he knows is going to put their all into winning now. Um, and I think that's where the contention came from and trying to find out, go back to this, um, this interview. Um, so she was like, she was like, Hey, so is it not about the money? Because he got offered whatever the max was that he could be offered, but they offered him the, the max years. And he was like, no, it's not about the money. And this is something that, that, that me and Coach Staley have talked about before as far as our profession. And he said, it's about saying that we need you. We want you here. We can't do this without you. Um, and that's the disconnect. You're saying one thing and you're saying it. And I mean, he says, I mean, I'm, I've, I've learned enough times in my life that saying something completely different than acting differently is untrustworthy actions speak louder than words and so he wants he's one of the top players in the nba i think he's proven he has that relationship with thibodeau and i think he knows that thibodeau trusts him and knows that he's gonna give everything he's got and so he wants that trust to be reciprocated because thibodeau's not only a head coach but he's also the gm or whatever the vice president of operations so I don't think I feel like he doesn't feel right now that he's being reciprocated that same type of that same type of trust. And um, and he wants to know that management is going to be put them in position to win. Maybe not this year, next year, the following year. And he doesn't feel with the core group of guys that they have right now that they can. So he wants to a have an exit strategy if things don't change or B want to know and B want to know that things are going to change. And I think from reading the interview, he didn't feel like either of those things were happening. So he said, I want to trade. And I mean, you got to give, that's, that's what, that's what the league is now where players want more control and, I think it's a good thing for the players, for sure. They have more control. They can't be locked into a five-year deal or whatever and have to play for that team. That's why LeBron and KD and those guys were signing one-year deals. So he wants to be in position where he's in control and and and, uh, and can can pick where he wants to go. And uh, I mean, I, I think a lot of us that are in jobs and maybe look at it from the outside and be like, "Hey, this dude's getting paid to." all this money, he should just be happy. No, we should, you still should still be able to be in control of your situation. And we, we don't understand that because we don't sign four or five year deals. Like if we don't like where we're at, we're at liberty to change. We're at liberty to go somewhere else. Maybe we're at a one year teacher contract, but I don't think, I definitely don't think it's fair to say, Hey, this dude, he should just shut up and play because he's getting paid all this money. And he has this, and he's about to get offered this four-year deal. No, you should be able to be in control of your situation. And I think that's doesn't matter if you're getting paid what we're getting paid, which is not much, or you're getting paid what these NBA guys are getting paid, which is a ton. The bottom line is we all want to be valued, and we all want management and our bosses to place value in what we do, and. And not to overlook that and be able to and be able to look at us like an integral piece that is not only an employee but also somebody that they can they can look in look at and trust in in decision making as well and that's what we want is we want value and so I don't think it's any different than what we want as as teachers coaches employees and then what Jimmy Butler wants as an NBA star but also an employee. I understand both of your perspectives and where you came from, and and but it's a little bit more into that that Jimmy Butler. 
I just don't believe what he he's he's telling the whole story. I just don't believe. One of the things that I read the other day, and I looked in, it's a a site where by NBA rumors was, well, he was upset because they gave um, Cat the max deal with with all the money, and then they gave. Andrew Wiggins, who we know doesn't play hard all the time, the money. But the reason they did was Jimmy Butler is 30 with bad knees and hasn't won anything. And how old is, you think, you got to think, how old is Carl Anthony Towns? How old, how old is Andrew Wiggins? So they felt like investing in the young talent they had, they just didn't want to – have three max players and play for the the luxury tax, the the luxury tax. When you only made it to the seventh, you, you had to play your way into the eighth seed. I agree with the management. I mean, like Jimmy Butler, he plays hard. He does. But would you start a franchise with Jimmy Butler? Well, I see both things. I see both things. Well, so from the reports, what I just saw, I mean, they offered him four years, 110 million. So they're offering him, they're offering him the money. Did, and, I see he could be like, hey, he, he could have been last year. He could have been like, hey, I don't think Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns are guys that we can win with. And that could have been something that he he has a relationship with Thibodeau. Could have went to Thibodeau and said that and been like, what are we going to do? We need to either make a move or this is not the situation for me. So I see – I see where he's coming from as well, where I don't think from all reports, he feels like, and just like you said, some of those guys, they're, they're younger, but they're, they're, how hard they play is questioned. Right. He's saying, hey, I don't want to sign him. I don't want to sign a deal. I don't want to sign a deal with these guys. I don't want to play another year with them. I want to force my way out now because I don't see this going anywhere. So I don't see why that's it. I, I see what, where he's coming from. I see where you're coming from, where man, management is like, hey, he's older. Uh, well, I don't know what we want to do. We already got these young guys signed under right. contract. Do we want to trade away these young guys and then invest in Jimmy Butler and try and bring in some other guys and just blow up our team and, and surrounded by Jimmy Butler? I see where they're coming from. But both obviously, they, both, they could both be coming from different sides. So if they're yeah. both – on different sides, then, hey, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, well, I I voiced my opinion. I don't want to play. I don't think we can win with these two guys. So I've told you guys repeatedly, I don't think we can win with them. If if this is my feeling and you want me to sign this deal and stay with you, you need to make a move and get rid of these guys. And management was like, okay, 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 but we're not going to do that. So at the, so finally, so Jimmy Butler by the summertime was like, okay, I've told them what I want to do. I, I've expressed what I want them to do. They're not, they don't, they don't agree with me. So it's time for me to move on. Like, I'm not going to just shut up and play my year out like, hey, everything's okay. No, they should have, the player should have some input on what goes on. And so I, I see, I see what you said, but I also looking at it from that perspective, I think you you should be able to come out and say, Hey, this isn't working. Make a move, make a deal. Yeah, but I this agree. is the, like, like, it, like two, two or three people done said, this is the same Jimmy Butler had the same problems in Chicago with Derrick Rose. Remember, remember those situations? But Timothy brought him. They must not have that problem with Thibodeau because Thibodeau brought him over to Minnesota. Well, his, right. his, to to speak to that point though, I just go think ahead, Jimmy. Go ahead, Coach. What's your what's your position? Go ahead, bro. Well, I go honestly ahead. feel like I, I've had an opportunity to read the article on ESPN.com, <clears throat> and um, he took the third stringers, and as he was playing and killing them, he's yelling out at the GM, "You effing need me, Scott. You can't win without me." And that's the first thing. Like, is that a little bit much? Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you're paying these other guys, and I know I'm playing harder than these guys, I know that they're more talented than me. 
but I know I'm playing harder than these guys. Like, you should be doing what you can to make sure I'm taken care of as well. Now, to your point, Brad, yeah, that point was brought up earlier on First Take and on and on uh, uh, Skip and Shannon earlier today where they said, you know, no GM, nobody's going to pay the luxury tax for a team that had to play into the playoffs, which is true. But at the end of the day, you, 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 Jimmy Butler is apparently a team guy. They said that many of the Minnesota players left practice energized by his performance. Like he, but they said it was a normal day in practice for him. And he says, at the end, they quote him as saying, am I being tough? And they're talking about Carl Anthony Towns. He's talking about Carl Anthony Towns. He says, am I being tough on him? Yeah, because that's who I am. I'm not the most talented player on the team. Who is the most talented player on the team? Cat. He's talking about Carl, Carl Anthony Towns. Who is the most God gifted player on our team? Wiggs. He's talking about Wiggins. Who plays the hardest? Me. I play hard. I put my body on the line every day in practice and every day in games. That's my passion. Everybody leads in different ways. That's how I show I'm here for you. If them boys was playing hard, I don't think he has a problem. I think he has a problem getting paid. Yeah, because everybody wants to be paid. You want to pay what you're worth. You talking about a four year? You talking about a four year coach? Y'all, I understand everything, and I'm I'm agreeing with all of y'all. But the NBA is about one thing right now: brand. And, you and right. if Carl Anthony Towns do not want to play with Jimmy Butler, that he's going behind the scenes and telling him he don't want to play with Jimmy Butler. And, and, then and if, what's and, gonna happen? And if they're gonna make but, it happen, but, but Minnesota's just asking too much but for Coach, Jimmy Butler. Teams are not willing, you know, be like, yeah, because they know uh, because to no. be honest, like Tibbs Tibbs knows that he needs Jimmy Butler. Like at the end of the day, you mean to tell me them boys seeing all this and they don't know they need him? Tibbs know that they need Jimmy Butler. So at the end of the day, yeah, I'm gonna make the price tag. I'm gonna make the price tag high because I don't want nobody to get this guy. I'm hoping that he plays through and that we can go ahead and and, and make something work down the line. But at the end of the day, like you know, shoot, if the dude is the if he took a bunch of third stringers and beat your starters, you don't think you need to pay that dude? You don't think he deserves something? He deserves some love? And, and and it's not like he don't want to be there. If he didn't want to be, like he could sit out. If he legitimately didn't want to be there, he could sit out. He could say, "Yo, I'm not coming to practice." Coach English, I understand what you're saying. As coaches, that's what we want. But you got to look at, and y'all got to look at it like this: business. It ain't about everybody. Sometimes thinking about wins or losses. When a team is between five and seven. We're good enough to make the playoffs, but we're not good enough to beat the top four, right? So what do most teams do after two or three years if that happened? They blow the team they up. They blow it up. And that's what they're about to do. Because even if you had Jimmy Butler, they still were the AC. So we're, they're at the bottom of the Western Conference. You're no close to catching up top teams. And the Lakers are getting better. So... They feel like, hey, we go with the young kids and we go try to build around them and hope they build into something. Because with what we got now, it's not good enough to get us to the second round. See, but 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 okay, uh, to that to that effect, shoot, you got Jimmy Butler putting up over twenty a game. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? And, and playing defense, he's one of your top defenders. And he's mm-hmm. doing his friggin' job, and you got these other dudes out here that's not playing hard. Like, they just not playing hard. So you mean to tell me you're going to get rid of this guy for these younger guys? And although I understand the business, yo, we're going to try to build around these two. But what happens when you try to build around those two and what you realize is that, like, you know what it's like when you got guys, right. your leaders don't work hard. You know what that's like. When, when your leaders don't yep. work hard, it is tough to win. It's tough to win a checkers game if your leaders ain't working hard. You know what I'm saying? Because there's me, no there's no in. fire. Let me chime in and say this right here. Obviously, Jimmy Butler had a relationship with Tibbs before he came to Minnesota. Right. So he was smiling when he came to Minnesota. Here's the mistake I think Jimmy Butler made when he went to that team. I'm going to take him for his word. I'm not going to, like, that's why I'm glad. I love that Coach Johnson is on his show because he always brings a sense of whenever we talk about sports, of the whole picture of how management is thinking, right. how the GMs are thinking. But here's my thing with Jimmy Butler. You knew 
how young Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns were before you got on this team. Yes. Those are the two names of the team. Those are the bigger brands of the team. As much as I love Jimmy Butler, he can play on my team any day, all day. And that's true. But with that being said, we know how the NBA works. Like with sports, dudes don't really start getting like the really talented guys that are good enough to stick around in the NBA and make it to their second and third contract. Dudes don't really start getting serious about winning until the end of their second contract. Because now they're older, they're like 25, they're 26, and they're starting to see, yo, it's more to my legacy than just a sneaker deal and commercials in but, a brand. But Josh, let me I ask you this. Josh, let me I ask a question. Be, let me ask a question. I like, want okay. To be a winner. But Josh, let me ask you a question. A like you, you, you say, you say, yeah. But they, first, they want to get their money. But Jimmy, but Jimmy, but you said Jimmy Butler went to a team where he knew the guys were young. Okay, that's fine. Shoot, LeBron James was young. Worked they, his, they worked his behind, their money worked and his, create a brand. Well, LeBron then, James did the same once, thing, once but he worked, taken care of. Then they were about winning. But here's the thing: LeBron James did the same thing, and and along the way, busted his behind and played hard. Jimmy Butler is saying he not he doesn't have a problem with their talent. He's having a problem with these guys playing hard. But see, here's the thing: this is what Jimmy Butler needs to understand. He's the difference maker in these young men's lives. Right. See, every, every great player has a like that moment that changes them from young NBA star to mature young man or mature man that, that wants to win and leave a legacy behind. All of the great ones go by do that. I don't know if Andrew Wiggins is going to turn into one of those great ones. I do think Carl Anthony Towns has that potential. But see, that's what Jimmy Butler has to be careful with and aware of because the LeBron James, the Michael George, the Kobe Bryants, they are exceptions to the rule. Let me let me let me rewind you a little bit. You know who just went through that? Everybody calls him a snake now. Kevin Durant. Kevin yep. Durant was in it was in his his, his second his second arm um, contract. And at the end of his second contract, what did Kevin Durant realize? Yo, I want to be a winner. Like, yeah, the money's great, the brand is great, and everybody's buying my jersey, but winning is more important to me. Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns are kind of on that turn. Jimmy Butler, it's your job to help them make that turn. Now, what Jimmy Butler has to understand, this is why I'm not going to call Jimmy Butler for love. I do believe he wants he wants management to appreciate him. He wants management to value him. But what he, he failed to make it clear for the average listener, like Coach Kurtz and myself, and you guys can understand where Jimmy was coming from. But – Jimmy Butler really wants management to see things from his perspective. See, if he see if they see things from his perspective, they see, yo, Jimmy is focused on winning. You guys do need to play harder. But it's not man- management's job to see things from only one player's perspective. It's their job to see things from an entire program, entire franchise perspective, and what it's going to take to keep this franchise moving forward. And right now, you got some young players who need to learn how to play hard. I agree with Jimmy Butler 100%. Andrew right, Wiggins right. takes plays off. Carl Anthony Towns has some of the best feet for a dude that's 6'10 or taller, a seven footer in, in, in the world right now. Get around that basket and dog dudes out instead of settling for the three ball, even though he has a very good um, stroke, a very good shot. But you can dictate games around the basket if you if you commit to that consistently. Those young guys have to be taught that. It happens in sports at all levels. At the high school, college, pro, those young guys have to be taught that. Jimmy Butler has to be able to control his frustration towards those young guys. But think about it. He already had a relationship with Tibbs before he even met before Tibbs even met um, Wiggins and Towns, right? Right. So why wouldn't Tibbs just jump on his side? Because Tibbs isn't just a coach. He's a GM, and he has to see things from the franchise perspective, not just Jimmy Butler's perspective. I do think Tibbs values um, Jimmy Butler. You know why? 
that's why he was asking for ridiculous trades because he knew those teams wouldn't take it because he wanted to keep Jimmy Butler there. And I give Tibbs kudos because I think Tibbs' mindset to the owners and management was this. If we trade Jimmy Butler, we're going to continue a trend that we aren't going to be able to control. And that's that, that trend is whenever players ask to be traded, we're going to have to trade them because that trend has already started and turned into – uh, 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 and a, a, a consistent occurrence. So that's what Tibbs was fighting. He didn't want to fall in that trend and do what the Cavs did with Kyrie Irving and just trade him because he was <laughs> unlike, unlike Unlike football, you can force management to do what they did to football. Lock them out and take back power. Because they want to play basketball, but they also love their money. So you got you got you you have to have a balance. And I understand what you're saying, Coach Staley, with, with with Jimmy Butler and everything. But Tibbs think Jimmy Butler can help the team, and and that's true. But with management, he, that's why it's hard for a coach to be general manager and coach because you you try to be a player's coach, but then you also got to worry about how management looking at things. And Jimmy got to understand. You might be the, the person that plays the hardest work, but they make more money than you, and they feel like they got more power than you. So you got to find a way to reach them without offending them. Because in their minds, it's, hey, we locked up. We good. You leave or we'll leave. Right. That's, and that's, what, see, that's what I'm concerned about because yeah. that's what T said in the interview. Yeah. See, Teague said that before they had the team meeting today. Teague was like, yo, we're good. We like Jimmy, but we're good whether he stays or not. So it's more to the story that's just on the surface. I'm going to take Jimmy at his word. He does want to be valued, but he wants to, he wants he wants people to see things from his perspective more than he wants to be valued because he wants to win right now. Like you said, he's 30. He's had a couple of um, knee injuries. God bless. I hope he stays healthy from this point forward in his career. So he know he need he wants to win now. But here's my question about wanting to win now. And I'm going to let Coach Kurz, I know Coach Kurz got something he want to say, but here's my question to Jimmy about wanting to win now. You say you want to win now, but the three teams you request to be traded to are not winners. Are not winners. They are far from winning. From winning. Far from winning. So are you really concerned about winning or are you just really pissed and you want to get up out of there? So that's my question to Jimmy Butler, but – I'm going to stop because, um, Coach Curtis, what you got, brother? And I know, Coach, you got yeah, something to say. That point, that point was brought up, but it's also, and I'm not for sure certain, but, I mean, those teams are pretty much set up to get two max players next summer. And so he's looking at it. Right. He's looking at it like, yo, well, I'm not going to win this year, next year, the following year with what we got in Minnesota. Yeah, are the Knicks, are the Nets, are the Clippers good right now? No, but as you guys know, teams, the NBA, can teams can flip within a year. And if you got the potential to get two max players and he can go to the New York Knicks with him and Kevin Durant, that all of a sudden that's a completely different team. So you can't just say, oh, he says he wants to go to these teams and they can't win. They're not. They're 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 not good teams. You can't really look at it like that because, that, as we all know, next summer that could be a completely different team. So I don't. I I I I, I mean, I, I like I said in the beginning. I don't know Jimmy Butler. I've never met Jimmy Butler, but I've been a fan of his of his tenacity and his work ethic and and what 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 people say about him. And obviously, Tom Thibodeau is one of the toughest coaches. In the league, and if he's somebody that wants him on his team, I mean, I think Jimmy Butler's a guy that I would want to play with, and a guy that I would want on my team. So, um, I mean, I see all everybody's points, and I see I see management's point for for a not wanting to make this deal, b not wanting to give him a short term contract, and c wanting to ask for crazy trades if they want to get rid of him. Um, but I also see Jimmy Butler's point as well. So I mean, right. All stuff is valid. So it's just yeah. Everybody, everybody makes great points. That's what I'm saying. But like Coach Johnson said in the beginning, it's always like a deeper story. 
Like right. it's always it's always something that goes on the day. And, and and to be fair, the locker room is old that got secrecy. We not we we as fans and analysts and, and media specialists aren't a, shouldn't be allowed to know everything that goes on in the locker room. But you know, like to to, to piggyback on what Coach Kerr said, you're right. Free agency can make any team go from who's to what's in in a matter of a signing in a couple of hours. But right. even right. even if they would have made that trade to those to those to one of those three teams, they still don't have those guys right now. And and so so that means he probably would have would have would have went through another season of mediocrity, arguably not even making the playoffs like like on, on some of those teams. So it was still it was still a gamble because there's no guarantee where KD's going to sign because KD's one brother that moves the way KD wants to move. Him and LeBron are very similar. They do exactly what they want to do. So you know it's 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 going to be tough. You never know, but. With that being said, man, I just, I just, I wish, like, like Coach Kerr said, I, I've been a fan of Jimmy for a very, very long time, and I love the way he played. I love his story even more from whence he's come. But right, right. it's just, it's just tough, man. It's just tough, and this is why, this is why, and we're going to get into that next week when we talk about decisions. It's very important to think. Before you react, because if Jimmy Butler doesn't go to the media and we don't find out he doesn't want to be traded and he's demanding a trade, we're not even having this conversation because with all that smoke, no fire occurred because he's still with the Minnesota Timberwolves. And now they're staring at him playing with the Minnesota Timberwolves this year. So I think it's very important that you really analyze things before you make a big decision about that. And that's all I got, man. What you got, Coachy? Well, I mean, all you guys, to, to borrow something from the Coach Kurtz uh, dictionary, uh, all you guys spoke so eloquently um, about the topic. And, uh, I mean, there's really nothing more I can add. Uh, what you said? <laughs> there's, there's, there's really nothing else I can add to it. Um, I, I just think there's no... You know, in, in topics like these, I, I think you just <clears throat> you can see both sides of it. I can see the business side. I can see Jimmy Butler's side. Um, and you just kind of try to work through, you know, all of that stuff and, 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 and come up with what's logical um, for you. Um, so we'll probably start. We're going to end that conversation there because I think we can. We done been on that for about 45 minutes. We could run that for a whole another hour. <laughs> well, <let's, laughs> going let's, back. Well, let's go real quick because that, that was a great conversation. Well, everybody, uh, where do you think Jimmy Butler will be at the end of this year? Do you think he'll stay with it? I think he'll be in Minnesota. Is this his contract think, year? This is it? This is this is it for his contract after this season? Yeah. Well, I think I, I, don't, I don't. He can't I, stay in Minnesota. Cause they no, oh, they're not going to pay him. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Not, they already gave um Big Cat and um you right. um, A Wiggins um those those contracts. I think he's out. I think he's going to honestly. I think he's going to go to one of the teams that he asked to be traded to because well, they can. Right. We got to we, we got to make a prediction. Okay. Well, well, my prediction is here's my prediction. Jimmy Butler goes to the Knicks. That's my prediction. I I agree. I agree. I says the Clippers with with Kawhi Leonard. I was I was I was Knicks as well. I I, I was thinking Knicks as well. I don't know why I just think that. No, I'm Knicks. gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you I, why. I just don't. I just don't see nobody going to the Knicks with the management and how. No, I'm gonna tell you why. It's been. I'm gonna well, tell you. And the Knicks are notorious for signing a a guy who's kind of already. <laughs> On the downside of his prime, for sure. Right. No, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, the Knicks. Knicks love doing it. I mean, um, Przingis is still there, and I, I really like that young point guard the Knicks have. But I think, I think he goes to the Knicks. But I can see him going. I can see him going to the Clippers also. But well, the reason why I mean, the reason why I said the Knicks is because Kawhi's what? Coach Johnson said you think Kawhi's going to going to the Clippers next year. Yes, I, when it comes to Kawhi, I, I'm a little biased because I'm a Spurs fan, but I think he has really hurt his career making bad decisions. Like, 
instead of him making his own decision, he's letting his his uncle make the decisions, and the way it has it playing out for him. Mm. Why not? Why not to the Lakers? No, he's not a guy that wants to be the man. He he'd be great in LeBron's shadow. I don't think so. I don't think they game match. I think him and him and Jimmy Butler could work out and they get somebody else. But yeah. you know, you when you look at the NBA, you let that stuff only work work out for the great franchises. Man, let me I tell mean, you something, man. Let me tell you something. You said LeBron and Kawhi game don't match. After this year, when Kawhi experiences that level of elite mediocrity he's going to experience <laughs> in Toronto, he's going to want to sprint to get back to winning. Kawhi took the, the Spurs for granted. I'm Here's my thing on position on Kawhi. I know this show is not about Kawhi, but my position on Kawhi is this. He's he is a he's a beneficiary of a great system. Right. Okay. He's a, and, and, and that system turned him into an all-star. Yeah, he had to put the work in. He had to be a great lockdown defender. But offensively, Kawhi doesn't bring a whole lot of like elite level skill set to the table. Like, think about it. If you had to pick five players to put the ball in their hand at the end of the game. In the NBA right now, would Kawhi be in your top five? No. My point exactly. And that's, I tell that's, you, about, if you think about the culture, he's used to a certain culture, and he's not used to that type of what he's going to be used with everybody freelance doing everything. It, it was a control environment. And see, Jimmy Butler would flourish in a control environment. And I just don't think – Minnesota is a controlled environment from top to bottom, like you would say with the Lakers and the Spurs and Boston. Those are the type of places where Jimmy Butler would flourish. But he's wow. a, you know up and coming. They're trying organization that's trying to find itself, and he and and it's frustrating to him. You know. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler, man. I wish well, I just hope he makes the right decision next season, man. It's it's. It's going to be big. They're going to have to, like, like you said, Coach Johnson, they're going to scrap through this year, and there's a strong possibility they're going to be in the bottom half of the West again. So it's, it's very difficult for management to want to make that investment. Like, you sign LeBron, hell, you know LeBron instantly makes you a playoff contender. And, and one more question before I go. Well, Jimmy Butler, the, like, the way you approach the situation might scare people off from wanting to play with you because who's to say – well, Jimmy Butler, who made him the foregone expert on who plays hard a certain way. So if you don't play hard and he don't believe you play hard, he might call somebody else out. So you got to be careful how you come off. You know? It's, it's levels, man. It's levels. It's levels. Right. Coach E, hit us with the next phase, Coach E. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to, but hey, listen, that was a great. Great debate, man. You guys really got into that, man, as well as myself, I must say. Uh, but um, let's move on to the next thing. And we'll post this on our social media, uh, Staley English Kurtz uh, on Twitter. And the question is this, and, and, and then we'll, we'll go around the table and see what we got. Uh, there, the question is this. There's one billion cash on the table. This team of five at their peak shows up. Choose your five to beat this team. And win a billion. You cannot duplicate any player on this team. Now the five are LeBron James, Michael Jordan, yes. Shaq, yes. Kobe Bryant, mm-hmm. and Michael and, and Magic Johnson. We'll start with you, uh, Coach Johnson, since you're the guest first. on the show. No, 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 no. I'm going first. Okay, I'm, going I'm, first. So, I'm sorry, sir. I will I'm, be obedient. I'm taking the mic on this one. By nah. all means. As coaches, we tend to just f some stuff up when we think we're smart. When we think we're smart, we'll be like, okay, we'll do this and just mess the players up. But here's what I did to analyze. Two, I didn't try to come up with a five that was better than those guys because I don't think you can do that. But I came up with a five that can counter those guys, okay, and beat them. Here's my five. Jason Kidd, Reggie Miller, Kevin Durant, Dennis Rodman, and Akeem Olajuwon. Now, why did I pick that? I'm going to be very brief. 
Olajuwon will eternally own Shaquille O'Neal after what he did to him when they won those finals. Shaquille O'Neal could not hold Olajuwon one-on-one. Dennis Rodman, he rebounds out of his area and he does not want, neither does he need the basketball. But more importantly, he doesn't want it. He's going to scrap, he's going to defend, he's going get to out, get, out, get after the loose balls. Reggie Miller doesn't need the ball to be effective. 78% of Reggie Miller points came off of moving without the ball. So now you got another guy that doesn't need the ball. Jason Kidd is the king of making everyone else around him better. And he ended his career as one of the top five. I mean, I'm sure people are going to pass him, but he's one of the top five point guards all time for three point shots made. So he's going to also stretch the floor. And then Kevin Durant is LeBron James kryptonite. I know people don't want to admit that, but one-on-one, LeBron James catches hell trying to stop Kevin Durant from scoring. So I went from a team, I counted a team with a bunch of ISO guys on it. Magic Johnson dictated the ball. Jordan dictated the ball. Kobe dictated the ball. LeBron dictated the ball. Shaq was one of the few centers in our career in our in our livelihood, in our livelihood, in our life lifetimes, that dictated the ball. And these guys, to my knowledge, counter them the best. I'm done. I'm dropping the mic. I know there's nothing else y'all can say to follow that up. Go ahead, Coach Johnson. All I got to say is how you gonna beat three of the most competitive players that ever laced it up. That's that's not the question. That's that's not the question. It, it just ain't gonna work. It's and and with Shaq in his prime, I'm like Kurt. Man, there ain't nobody on the planet you can put together to beat that five. So, 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 Coach Johnson, Coach Johnson don't have a five. Who you got, Coach? Coach Kurt? Who you got? Yeah, I mean, so we talked about it before the show, and like Coach Johnson said, I was I looked at that and was like, there's nobody beating this team. But I mean, for sake of arguments, and I, I like what you said, Coach Staley, you got to figure out a way. Um, just to to either to either play a different style than those guys play or to outscore them or to have some type of mismatches. So um, I kind of went with to outscore them and maybe have a key mismatch here or there. So it ain't no mismatches. Well, uh, well, well, the one guy, the yeah, I agree. I I agree what you're saying there. There's one mismatch potentially, and and Kevin Durant pro, pro, provides a mismatch. Provides a mismatch. If you're saying it, it, Le, LeBron, who I guess you're gonna say LeBron's gonna guard KD, and LeBron, I mean, is an athletic freak, but KD is a mismatch on whoever he plays. KD's six eleven and can can shoot it from anywhere. So I, I agree with you. KD is one guy that can be a mismatch on on uh, on switches and everything. So I guess I would say to outscore them, I would say one guy that can 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 match up with Shaq is Wilt Chamberlain. Um, at the four, I'm going to go Tim Duncan. The three, KD, and then just to outscore them and potentially be a mismatch because. They're completely different players than Magic and Kobe is at the at the one and the two, Allen Iverson and Steph Curry. Damn, that's tough. I like I like how you threw Iverson in there because he's a um supreme competitor. Coach Coach English, who are your guys? Who are your guys? All right, well, me and me uh Josh, me and you had a couple of the same guys, but um mine was kind of along the same lines as you guys. I, I I do think that, no, there is no five that can beat them. But, you know, for argument's sake, you know, we, we put it out there, so we're going to do our best. Um, I think you got to be able to score the ball. So I went with Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. Um, and then at the one, I got Jason Kidd. And then on the inside, just because of one of the players inside, because of their versatility, I picked Anthony Davis. I think he's probably one of the most complete players, and he's going to probably end up being one of the most complete players in history. Um, 
and I, I went with yours, Josh, on this one. Uh, Shaq's kryptonite, Hakeem Olajuwon. I think Shaq's still looking for Hakeem on some of those spin moves. So um, I think he's still looking for him. I, I still don't think he know where he at. But, um, and I think that's a formidable five. I said, if for nothing else, it would be a really good game. Um, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be hard to be deaf. Like that five is like unbearable. But all I can think about is the problems that five would bring to themselves. Yeah. Which is the easiest type of basketball to defend is ISO basketball because you have to ask yourself how many double staggers or down screens you've seen Kobe come off, Jordan come off, LeBron come off. Those dudes don't move without the ball. They are the ball. You understand? So you that's the only way you can be able to beat them is to allow them to play to their strengths. I know that sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy, but that's the only way you can do it. And you have to counter it with dudes that don't mind playing away from the balls. But I, I really love that, man. I love, like, arguing about stuff like that, man. But I'm going to stop because we can argue about that another 15 minutes. We'll get to uh, our closeouts and shout-outs, man. Coach, you can get us going, man. Get All right, going. man. We're going to start the shout-outs, man. We're going to start with our guest, Coach Johnson, man. Uh, uh, go ahead with your shout-outs. Coach Johnson? Hello? He might be. He might He might have had to go do daddy duty. Um, All right, Coach Kurtz. Is, Coach Kurtz, go ahead, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, just – just everybody, I appreciate everybody on the show. I appreciate what we do, uh, what the, the conversations that we have. I appreciate you guys' friendship. And, I mean, life is uh, life is precious, as you see with these hurricanes. Everybody, I, uh, shout out to everybody who, uh, uh, that maybe if they, they've been affected by it, but, but not majorly affected by it with any type of loss of lives because we uh, – Somebody in the AC Flora family, uh, two great kids, great baseball players uh, at AC Flora. They lost their father the last night, and it's just it's just crazy how uh, I mean he was completely completely healthy and just passed away. And uh, prayers up to uh, Baker and Harmon Cox and everybody in the AC Flora baseball family for sure because uh, that's that's the only thing that really matters is it is life. So I mean. We all go through stuff all the time where we lose stuff, uh, but uh, life is life is the most precious thing. And and to see somebody uh, see some unbelievable kids lose their father just out of nothing is it, it just just at the not expected at all is just crazy. So definitely prayers up to them, and and definitely uh, appreciate uh, appreciate every moment you have on this earth for sure. Yeah, I'll get into my shout outs to piggyback on what you said, Micah, man. Those young men that lost their father, and I know I, I, it's, it's hard to say, but I will tell you this their father has done great work with those young men. He's not leaving them behind loss. I know they're hurt right now, and they might even feel lost, but he's like from the daily conversations and, and just their simple interactions of how they know how to speak as young men. But he's done a great job with them. Um, if, if there's anything we can do for them, you know, the Staley English Show, Preacher Coach Curse will be there for you. Or, you know, y'all going to see me at school, come talk to me, whatever you need, because I know it hurts. And I know, you know, I've been there. I've lost a parent. I've lost my mom at, at, at a young age. So I know what it feels like to go through this. And I know they're extremely hurt. So, you know, I'm praying for you guys. I'm praying for everyone that was affected by the storm. Um, Mexico City, I'm, I'm, um, Florida, I'm really praying for you guys. Like, we take so much for granted, you know, just waking up with a roof over your head, you know, and it can be lost in an instance, like a storm. So, you know, God bless to all those people. Um, I'm praying that you that you stay strong in faith and, and find your way. And, you know, hopefully these prayers mean something for you and, 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 they, and they help you and God answer them. And just and, and and just a simple continue. Um, I thank you for all of our listeners, and we really appreciate that. And you know, y'all keep moving forward, man. You, get, you just got to keep moving forward. It gets it gets difficult at times, but you got to keep putting left in front of right because the the next phase, the next episode, a little bit of joy is always around the corner, man. Go ahead, Coachy. 
Yeah, uh, <clears throat> want to give some shout outs. Uh, uh, want to piggyback on what you guys said. Uh, didn't know about the uh, AC floor um, loss, and uh, I, I want to uh, echo my echo the sentiments of my two co-hosts here. Uh, you know, anything that we can do um, from the show, just please email us and, and and let us know, and we'll be willing to be there. I know Coach Daly, you're actually on Ground Zero, so if you hear of anything that we can do, just you know, make sure to let us know, and 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 uh, you know, we'll be there to back you up as much as possible. Um, next thing, uh, you know, uh, Mexico City once again, you know, our prayers go out to them. Um, um, I think they have a couple of websites set up. So if you want to donate or help out, um, I, I would say Google it. I don't have them right in front of me <clears throat> currently. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, excuse me, we're going to be looking into it as well. Um, last thing. And then I'll stop saying um so much. Um, I want to give a shout out to our listeners, man, because honestly, without you guys, we wouldn't be here. Um, and we got some good news earlier today. We are now on uh, we have now reached uh, probably one of the largest uh, mediums that you could possibly reach as a podcast. And we are now on iHeartMedia. Um, so you can find us on iHeartRadio. Uh, just download the iHeartRadio app and, and search uh, the Staley in English show featuring Coach Kurtz. And you'll see our logo. You click on it and you can listen to us there. Um, it's it, for us to be making these moves within a year has been uh, a blessing from God. And, and we really, really want to thank our loyal listeners, the ones that email me uh, when we have the ones that email me when there's a bad when, when we don't have a show up or uh, the ones that uh, catch Coach Staley or Coach Kurtz and, and say, hey, man, uh, I really listen to your show. So um, thank you, guys. Thanks to the listeners. But we, as we continue to move forward and, and once again, uh, thanks to. Uh, the Defy Life Network for helping us uh, push our brand and um, really get ourselves out there. Um, start to look out for we're coming out with some Staley and English show featuring Coach Kurt's gear soon. So look out for that. And uh, and we're going to go ahead and get out of here. So if you want to join the conversation, hit us at the Staley and English show. That's the Staley A.N.D. English show at Gmail dot com. Uh, leave us your comments. Um uh, uh, you can email us questions that you might want answered on the air. If you want to be a, if you want to be a guest, hit us up. You know we're more than welcome. Uh, we we would love to have guests on. Um, also, uh, hit us up on all our social media. It's all the same. Staley and English Show. Um, you could type in on Twitter, Staley English Kurtz on. Uh, Instagram is Staley English Kurtz. And when you listen to us on any of the podcast mediums that you listen to us on, please share the share it, comment, like it, and rate us. Okay. Um uh love you guys to death. Uh and as always, as always, as always, put God first, everything that's a follow. Peace. Last thing, last thing, hey, uh a, a great, great, great uh topic, uh coach English with the what five would be uh, would be that five with MJ and Kobe? Any of our listeners feel I would love to see you guys email or tweet us uh, oh, yeah. your thoughts on a five that could could stand because I, I I thought that was a cool uh, cool topic for sure. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and your five and your thoughts for sure. Yeah, Mike, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and put that on our Twitter in about two seconds. As soon as we're done, I'm gonna go ahead and post that on our Twitter and see what we get, and we'll talk about it. We'll open up the next show with it. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, so, hey, love you guys. Peace. All right. Peace out. Shh. You hear that? Listen closer. That, my friend, is the deafening sound of focus. It drowns out all the useless noise that can clutter the moment. Naysayers don't exist. Haters? Smaters? The peanut gallery? Who's that? When you in your zone... All that noise and all that buzz is just elevator music. So, enjoy your journey, focus on your goal, and bask in the quiet roar that is progress. Because when it's your time to shoot that shot, spit that verse, or close that deal, the only voice that matters is yours. Defy life.